Hello and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn series. It's day four of our Heart Failure Awareness Week. Super excited to have you all here. Today's title for our presentation is Patient and Provider Resources for Heart Failure Tools that you can use. Uh, my name is Kelly Macheska and I'm the Senior Programs Manager for Heart Failure and part of the AHA Quality Team of Outcomes Research and Analytics. Super excited to have you join today. As you can see, these are some featured activities that we've been um, doing this week to be able to share with all of our um, customers and support staff um, out in the field. So with that being said, before we kick off today's event, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items just so you know how to participate in the event today. This is a Lunch and Learn series that's being recorded and will be sent out to you within the next 24 hours. Today's presentation can be downloaded in the handout section of the GoToWebinar control pane, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. All DAO-in participants will be muted to allow the speakers to present without interruption. We really want this to be interactive today, so after um, the team presents the um, patient resources and provider resources, then we will have a Q&A session, so please feel free to type those in to the question segment throughout um, the presentation today, and we'll be sure to answer those at the end of the session. Um, if you, by chance, would have any um, technical if difficulties during the presentation, most can be resolved by refreshing your browser. If you're not able to do that, please log off and log back on or go ahead and um, send us an IM message and we will try to correct that as possible. Now, without further ado, I'd like to present our speakers today, which are part of the Implement HF team. We have Lynn Saradowski, we have Rhoda Sanders joining us, Robin Kaiser, to Ruthie Turker and Christina Sturzing. They're all quality improvement managers with the AHA and they're covering um, regions within the United States. So ladies, I'm gonna turn it over to you and um, please kick off today's event. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lynn Malasardinsky. I'm the quality programs manager in Metro Milwaukee with the American Heart Association. Super excited to be with all of you today. Thank you for taking time out of your busy weeks to recognize Heart Failure Awareness Week, and we really hope that you'll enjoy today's Lunch and Learn. It's just going to be a brief overview of all of the resources that we have here at the American Heart Association. Super exciting that they're all free resources that you can use to support your patients and your colleagues um, throughout providing heart failure care in your communities. So thanks again for joining us. We're going to start today's Lunch and Learn just doing a review of some of our patient-focused resources. So starting with this first one, Doctor, It's Been Too Long. And I should preface that the slides are in the handouts, um, as Kelly mentioned, in the far right-hand side of your screen. You can go to handouts, look at the slides. All of the materials that we'll be reviewing throughout today's Lunch and Learn are linked at the top of the screen. So this one here where you see Doctor, it's been too long. If you click the title there, you'll be able to access this PDF shown on your screen. So this is a great tool to provide with your patients that they um, will help them prepare for their next visit. We know that it's been a really challenging time for all of you and for all of our patients um, the last couple of years. And a lot of our patients are not coming in to seek routine health care like they used to. So this is a great material to be able to provide them to encourage them to um, maintain their healthcare routine appointments, to visit you in your, your clinics and your provider offices, and gives them some guides to help them make them feel more comfortable um, in beginning their, their journey to preparing for their next visit within your organization. Ms. Ruthie, can you advance to the next slide, please? Sorry, everyone, it looks like we're having trouble advancing. Sruthi, are you able to advance to the next slide? I think she lost her connection. Um, can you give the, I don't know if you can give control to me, Lynn, I'll try it. Let me see if I can take control here. Oh, 
sorry, everyone. Thanks for hanging with us with the technical difficulties. Robin, are you able to share your screen? Otherwise, I can share mine as well. The good thing about this is hopefully we're getting our technical difficulties out of the way early in today's call and we'll be able to have smooth sailing the rest of the way. Thanks, Christina. I see the slides. Oh, okay, somebody's got it. Yep, we're good. Cool. Thanks, Christina. If you don't mind advancing to the next slide, please. Great, thank you. So the first resource that we showed you was the doctor, it's been too long, helping them get comfortable coming back to the doctor's office. This next one is a great way to also prepare them for what happens when they, they do come into the clinic and have their appointment. This is a great um, touch point to be able to prepare them for some questions they might want to ask at their next appointment and how to prepare to really get them thinking about, you know, what are some of the symptoms they've been experiencing since the last time they saw their provider? What are some questions that they may want to ask about, you know, what are the causes of heart failure? What can they do to learn more about their condition? Any lifestyle changes that they may want to adapt? So this is a great um discussion guide for the patient to use to prepare for their next appointment as well. Next slide, please, Christina. Thanks. And then this My Heart Failure Guide is a great interactive workbook. This is free, um, again, available at the link at the, the top of your screen. And this is you know, more for our tech savvy patients, if you have them, that are able to go online and look at um, an interactive workbook that really walks them through the start of the disease process, understanding their condition, any lifestyle changes that they may want to make, questions about their condition. I um, mean, if you go to the next slide, please, Christina. It also has um, several different areas worked out through the workbook, sectioned off on the effects of heart failure on the body, managing their heart failure symptoms, living well with heart failure, asking them some things about what might be important to them. Is it, you know, being able to walk with their grandchild? Is it an upcoming wedding that they want to attend, that they want to be able to dance at? Um, do they have an activity that they really enjoy that their goal is to be able to get back to that? So it walks them through um, several different educational topics, but also it has tools embedded for things that they can think about to bring to their provider and maybe ask some additional questions. If you can go to the next slide, please, Christina. So within the interactive workbook, there's several different patient tools that can be downloaded as a PDF as well, like an emergency contact list. Again, that symptom tracker, very similar to the red, yellow, green, looking at when do I need to call my provider, some hidden sources of sodium, some great resources on reading food labels and nutrition, you know what to look for at the grocery store, and then an eating away from home guide that if they are choosing fast food or that you know they're traveling and that's the only option for them, what are some choices that they can pick that are lower in sodium? Some activity guides on stretching and strength and balance exercises, a tracker where they can, you know, it, they can write on it this, they could print it and write on their activity, a medicine chart so they know what medications they're taking, when they should be taking them, and some education on the different. Um, drug classes that we often prescribe for our heart failure patients. Next slide, please. We also have this life after hospitalization guide, again, that you can find at the link at the top of the slide. This is really great looking at the projection of the heart failure patient, not just, you know, when they're in the hospital, but what happens after they're discharged from the hospital. We oftentimes get so focused on that acute phase, we forget to provide that education about, you know, what what's important for the patient to be looking at one week after discharge, making sure that they have that follow-up appointment within seven days and we're educating them on the importance for having that appointment and some things that they may wanna consider bringing to that appointment, like their list of questions, any medication list, if they have questions about side effects. Um, it walks them through what's important to look at at seven days, at a month after discharge, what are those activity goals, 
what are their personal goals so we can partner with them in achieving that? And then, you know, what does living with heart failure long-term look like? And encouraging them to be an empowered patient, um, making active decisions and having conversations with their provider. Next slide, please. We also have this patient resource center where you'll find many of the resources that I already mentioned. This is kind of your one-stop shop to get all of the resources that I previously mentioned and some additional resources as well. This is also a great website to go to that offers um, our educational materials in different languages. So you can see the symptom tracker is available in English and Spanish. Um, we also have, you know, if your patient has questions about, you know, what is an ejection fraction and what does that mean for me having heart failure? That's available in English and Spanish. Um, questions about an educational tip sheets on improving low ejection fraction, this partnering in your treatment, questions to ask your doctor on the far right-hand screen is again, something that they could print out or you could print out and give to your heart failure patients that walks them through understanding their condition, identifying the needs and exploring treatment so they can have more of a guided, meaningful discussion with their provider. There's also, in addition to the patient information sheets, there's little videos that um, you can see screenshots of in the far right-hand bottom corner that will walk them through um, ejection fraction, what it means, the signs and symptoms of heart failure. So if your patient is more of a visual learner that would learn better from these short little videos, they can watch those um, rather than just giving them the educational support tools in a written format, or you could do a combination of both. Next slide, please, Christina. And then our patient support network. So we know again how challenging this has been and how isolating it has been for all of us in this um, the last couple of challenges in the last couple of years. So we have an online support network that is free for patients. Um, again, you'll see the link at the top of the, the slide for today. And this is the American Heart Association Patient Support Network. A patient can log into this for free, sign up for the patient support network, and it will connect them to other patients and caregivers with conditions similar to theirs. So there is a section for patients. There's also a section for you know, families and loved ones that are caring for patients with heart failure. Just as a great way to be able to virtually connect with each other, it focuses, it functions as a message board and a forum. There's also um, different highlights and educational material linked through here, but it's just another great way that people can connect with each other um, and not feel so isolated and understanding their condition. This gives them a chance to be able to connect with others that have heart failure, maybe are at different stages than someone that's newly diagnosed and can offer some peer-to-peer -peer support. Next slide, please, Christina. And then I'm really excited to announce this newer resource from the American Heart Association called the Find Help. It's at findhelp.com. This is a really great resource to be able to address some of our social determinants of health. So I really encourage you to go to this site. Again, it's findhelp.com. Type your zip code in. The, the screenshot that you see here is the exact screen you'll see um, when you first go to the findhelp.com website. You type in your zip code and it will link you to several. I think when I typed in mine, I had 2,000 resources available at my fingertips. Um, in different sections like food, legal help, job security, um, healthcare access, um, housing, several different resources um, within your area that are free or at reduced cost. So looking at this can either be a resource that you give directly to your patients and encourage them to use this site, or you can also use it, you know, when the patient, you're with the patient at the bedside or in the clinic to help access some of those resources and give them the information right there while they're there in your presence. Just a really great resource um, looking at the social determinants of health or free or reduced cost resources in the area um, of the communities you serve. And like I mentioned, there's you know, several different categories, even transportation. So we know some of the challenges with our heart failure patients are being able to get them into the office for that follow-up appointment within seven days, right? And so this would help us identify resources in the community where they are offering free or reduced cost transportation to get them to that follow-up appointment. So I cannot, cannot encourage you enough to check this one out. It's a great resource to be able to 
offer free or reduced cost resources to your patients in your communities. Next slide, please, Christina. And then provider resources. So I mentioned the last one on the findhelp.com. It can really be used from a patient or provider um, scope to give those resources to your patients. And now we're going to switch the focus a little bit to, you know, what are some resources that are available to us as providers that we can give ourselves education, look at quality improvement tools, um, and things that will help us in supporting the care of our heart failure patients. So the first one that I'll mention is our Get With the Guidelines Heart Failure Quality Improvement Program. I know many of you on the line are probably very familiar with this program, but those of you that may not be, this is a part of the American Heart Association suite of quality improvement programs. This is an in-hospital program um, that's designed for improving care for heart failure patients by promoting consistent adherence to the latest scientific treatment guidelines. So whenever guidelines are updated, our registry tool is updated, it provides access to real-time reporting. So as soon as data is entered, you're able to export that data into real-time reports and have consultation with our AHA quality improvement staff to really help you identify gaps in care and areas for improvement, as well as give consultation on to resources that can help you improve those areas of care and ultimately improve outcomes for your heart failure patients, like reduction in readmission, reduced mortality, and then improved quality of life for our heart failure patients. So if you're not familiar with our Get With the Guidelines Heart Failure Program, um, I highly encourage you to ask a question in the chat or when we're finished today, there will also be um, a link where you can submit a question if you would like to be connected with your, your local quality improvement staff. Next slide, please. Target Heart Failure is the American Heart Association's initiative aimed at reducing 30-day readmissions um, by providing all of you with um, resources to address this challenge. So some of the things that we have available within our Target Heart Failure website are access to risk calculators, um, like the Yale, the Yale Core Calculator or the LACE Plus Calculator that many of you may be familiar with. We have our measure logic and rationale for all of the measures that you see here on why this is truly best practice for our heart failure patients um, and what the science supports in making sure that we're adhering to these guidelines and how it impacts the heart failure patient. Next slide, please. There's a plethora of resources within the Target Heart Failure website, but just a couple that I wanted to point out. And again, you'll be able to access these through the Target Heart Failure link. It's just um, heart.org slash Target HF. But a couple that I wanted to highlight are a discharge checklist. So this walks you through, you know, and you can, I've seen hospitals embed this into their EHR or create a best practice advisory that encompasses the same things you hear on the, you see here on this PDF version. But it really is meant to look at, you know, have we done all of these things before the patient is discharged? Are they on the appropriate guideline directed medical therapy? Did we refer them to you know, a disease management or cardiac rehab program? Um, what is their blood pressure? Is it controlled? Have they received their appropriate vaccines? Um, if they need an EP consult, did we do that? Um, have they had an echo done? So making sure that we're addressing all of the guideline-based care prior to the patient's discharge. We also have a telephone follow-up form we know that many of you, especially now, are conducting telephone follow-up visits with your patients. So this is a great place to start. And again, you can you can start with these PDF versions that are available to you and tweak them to meet your healthcare organization's needs. So if there's a shortened version that you want to create and don't want to ask all of these questions, or if you want to expand and ask more questions that are appropriate to your patient population, if you want to incorporate a health-related social needs assessment into your follow-up phone call, you could do that. But this is a great starting point that walks out some questions for you that you may want to consider asking your heart failure patients when you're conducting a telephone follow-up visit. And this, again, is something that I've seen created into an EHR template that allows you to be able to document that conversation as well. So creating a dot phrase to um, capture these questions. We also have a readmission review checklist that you'll see on the far right-hand side of your screen that if you would have a patient admitted, what are some things that we want to make sure we focus in on with the patient and their family, as well as our care team? You know, looking at, did we prescribe guideline-directed medical therapy? 
Was that an area of, of improvement identified? What is the patient's living situation like? If we prescribe the right meds, are they taking them? Uh, where is there an opportunity to incorporate some of our multidisciplinary team members? Maybe it's nutrition, maybe it's a pharmacy consult. Um, are there health-related social means that contributed to bringing the patient back to the hospital that maybe we need to use that findhelp.com and connect them with some additional resources? How can we empower them um, with that self-management when they leave the hospital to avoid, to avoid being admitted again in the future? So this really walks through identifying some of those root cause um, reasons for readmission and then helping connect the dots about what we could do to avoid that in the future. So this is a great tool to use for that. Next slide, please. I think we may have skipped one or did it, there we go, thanks. So the next one is our guidelines on the Go app. So something you could do right now if you haven't already is go to the app store on your phone, whether it's Apple or Android, um, and you could Google, Google or search in your app store guidelines on the go. And this is the American Heart Association. Algorithms, any patient education materials, these can all be accessed through your mobile device. So not just heart failure is listed in this app, but um, coronary artery disease, COVID-19, atrial fibrillation, stroke, all of the American Heart Association guidelines are accessible within this app and very easy um, to read, very user-friendly. So I encourage you to download this on your device so that you have access to the guidelines at all times. Next slide, please. This is another great resource for our healthcare professionals. This is our healthcare network. It is available for any of our certified um, American Heart Association certified centers, as well as any of you that participate in our quality improvement programs like Get With the Guidelines Heart Failure. This is a network truly designed for you so that you can ask questions of your peers. You can look for resources and share resources with your peers. We have um, American Heart Association news and upcoming events that we share in a news feed there, like you'll see on the far right-hand side. Um, highlighting, for example, our lunch and learns. Um, but this is a way really to connect all of you with each other, to be able to share challenges, share best practices. This is a free resource and we highly encourage you to sign up if you haven't already and engage with your colleagues. Next slide, please. You will also see in the handout section in today's webinar. So again, if you go to the far right-hand side of your screen and under handouts, there is a telehealth provider checklist. This is meant to just help walk you through the times of telehealth and walking through preparing for it, um, what you might wanna do before the visit, during the visit, after the visit, some tips on reimbursement. So I encourage you to check out this provider checklist if you haven't already done so as well. Next slide. You'll also find linked in the slides um, a very recent release, a scientific statement from the Heart Failure Society of, Mer of America on COVID-19 and heart failure. So if you haven't checked this out, this was um, just recently released and you can um, look at this from the Heart Failure Society of America. Next slide. And then you'll see listed here, We, if you are not familiar with our Professional Education Center, we have a lot of materials available, many of them associated with CMEs, um, continuing education credits on our learn.heart.org website. You can just search heart failure um, and it will come up with a multitude of educational opportunities that are available to you that you can watch at your convenience. This is just a list of them here, um, but you can see they're on a variety of topics throughout a variety of disciplines and care settings. So we have um, educational opportunities on COVID-19 and the impact on acute um, processes for taking care of heart failure patients. We have advanced heart failure care management, as well as you know starting from building a heart failure clinic and what are some model sharing tips for just starting to look at building that heart failure program. We also have educational topics on um, reducing readmissions, on 
healthcare in a heart failure in the acute care setting, as well as skilled nursing facilities, um, recognizing acute decompensation and heart failure, um, just a variety of topics that are available on our learn.heart.org website. Many of them are free and many of them have CME associated with them. So I encourage you to check those out, especially if you're needing to get some continuing education credit um, in this virtual world. Next slide, please. Along with another virtual educational opportunity, we're really excited to announce our Heart Failure Summit. This is a virtual event taking place March 9th um, from 10 to 2, so just about a half day um, central time on March 9th. This is, again, a virtual event that's really focusing on social determinants of health and the model sharing for guideline-directed medical therapies, as well as some great sessions on transitions of care. There will be CEUs provided for this event, and you can also find the um, save the date with the information for registration in the handouts of today's webinar. So we hope that you'll be able to join us for that. We're really looking forward to that. Next slide, please. In addition to the Heart Failure Summit, we have some previous um, events that have been conducted in case you missed them and would like to reference back Again, some educational opportunities if you're looking for continuing education credit, you are able to access our 2020 Heart Failure Expo virtual event online. There are 23 sessions available that you can go to that website and search through if there's any sessions that pique your interest and you'd like to take part of, as well as if you missed our scientific sessions, our large cardiovascular conference that takes place in November every year. If you are an AHA professional member, you can access scientific sessions on demand for free, or there is a fee um, if you're a non-member, but it is still available to you and you can access um, continuing education credits through that link as well. Next slide, please. So with that, I hope that the overview of the patient and provider resources was helpful to you. I hope it was a good refresher for some of you that may have been familiar with those resources, um, and I hope you learned some exciting new resources for your patients and provider as well. We're happy to take any questions that you might have. So team, I'll, I'll leave it to you if there's any questions. Yes, Lynn, quite a few good ones came in. Uh, one of the questions that we have is, how can an organization become a provider for, for AHS? AHS. I'm wondering if that was maybe a typo. Do they mean AJ? And is it provider or a member? No, a provider. Become a provider. I'm not quite sure that if the um, if Jill would would mind just adding a little bit more information for us, we'll be happy to. H. They meant AHA. <laughs> okay. All right. They said how oh, AHA. Sorry, Rita. Can you repeat the question? How can an organization become a provider for AHA? Okay, so I'm not sure if maybe they're referring to like a cert, like becoming a certified organization or being a part of our quality improvement programs, um, or yeah. just a professional member of our like learn.heart.org and accessing the educational material. So there's quite a few different ways that you can get involved with AHA. Um, not if they want to expand a little bit more in the questions on what exactly they mean by being a provider or if you know, they're looking to get involved on you know a professional volunteer level, we're always looking for that as well. Um, they can expand in the questions or they could reach out on the link here and we'd be happy to connect you with someone in your area and learn a little bit more about how you're looking to get involved. There were some really good questions that came through, and we've made some answers, but I think that they bear repeating so everyone could hear. And one of the questions, and Lynn, you can certainly add into this. Uh, one of the questions was, were any of the videos in Spanish? It's a great question. Team, I'm not sure if you're aware if they are or not. I know some of the little videos are available in English. I, We can definitely check with our patient team and circle back um, on what might be available in Spanish. And um, uh, here's another question. If we didn't sign up for the other webinars being offered this week, can we still have access to the recording? Yes, absolutely. We have a list of um, all of the 
webinars that we've done so far this week um, and the recordings available. So you can either reach out to um, the email address here and your local quality improvement team can connect with you and send you those recordings. Um, and I, we can also you know, grab your email address from the chat and make sure that you've got those. This is also, I think, a really good question that bears, and we responded to this, but I think it's one that uh, bears repeating so everyone can hear the answer. Is there a QR code available to include in our hospital heart failure materials? Sure, so it depends on what resource they're referring to. Quite a few of our resources have QR codes available. If there's a specific one that you're looking for, we can also reach out to our marketing team to add a QR code if it doesn't already exist. So maybe if they want to expand on, on which Lynn, resource they were. I think yeah. that was when you were talking about the find help and I had responded that there's not one there now, but we can definitely talk about whether we can add one. Yep, great idea. So, um, Robin has responded to quite a few of these, uh, especially the ones that have the links. They are listed in the chat. Well, I think that that just about is it. And Robin, unless you see some others that I do not see, and if anybody else would like to add any question, we're, we've got plenty of time yet to answer them. Please feel free. Yeah, just, while we're waiting, I did see that the person that asked about being a, a provider for the organization, it looks like they were looking for um, a certified organization. So we have several different certification programs available throughout the American Heart Association, depending on the care setting that you're in. So you have advanced certification in heart failure, healthy senior living, um, skilled nursing facility certification, um, hospice, home health. Um, yep, yeah, okay, so home health. We just had, um, a really great lunch and learn yesterday on certifications and home care was one of them that was highlighted. So we'll make sure that we connect with you and share um, the lunch and learn that was done yesterday and connect you with our certification team to learn more about that. I see some comments about um, looking at the developing the interactive workbook in Spanish. So we can definitely take that to our patient team um, and advocate that that's a needed resource. There was a question that was asked about how are these resources identified and added to the list? And I'm uh, I'm not quite sure what that is in relationship to. So if the person wouldn't mind adding a just a comment or two. And right, I'm not sure if that's the same thing where someone was asking for a list of, of all the resources. And I think um, we referenced that you can download the slides that would have them, but I think it's also a great idea and a great opportunity for our team that we could create just like a one pager that lists um, all of the resources in one place and and send it out to everyone. So you can just kind of have a, a one stop shop to get to all of these if that would be helpful rather than going through the slides. OK, um, it says see another... go ahead. Oh, sorry. I see another question about the Find Help program and how the resources are identified and included. So um, there is a network support team at Find Help that their full team job is to identify local resources um, and work with the communities um, to make sure that those are all of the resources that are listed there continuously are evaluated to make sure they're up to date and still available. Um, as well as adding new resources. So there is an entire support team at Find Help that AHA works with to make sure those resources are identified and up to date. And Lynn, did you see the question, do you have any educational materials in Russian? Not that I'm aware of, um, but we can definitely again take that with our patient team. And there's a question about accessing prior days, the previous lunch and learns. I think you may have answered that one. I'm not quite sure. Yes, so we can make sure that we, if you registered for this week's, you should be receiving a link to the recording. If you didn't register, we can absolutely, we have access to um, the attendee list with the email addresses for today, and we can make sure that we 
send them out to you um, all of the previous recordings and slides from this week. So we'll definitely take note of your information and get those out to you. And one more question. How uh, do you have staff targeted education for pre-hospital care? EMS flight crew. Okay, that's a great question. Yeah. So yeah. I think, and are you looking specifically for heart failure education in the pre-hospital setting? So I, we do have some you know, that are very focused on, on yes. outpatient care and clinical providers, but I think, you know, looking at, um, at pre-hospital care from an EMS perspective is also a great idea. We have some, um, and you're looking for staff targeted education. So not necessarily for the patients you might be seeing, but pre-hospital. I think that's a great opportunity that we can definitely look into. Um, and at learn.heart.org, there's several educational sessions that are applicable to all different disciplines, regardless of you know what care setting. There's some great information on the stages of heart failure, caring for a patient in the acute phase, as well as you know, critical patients. So those may be some good educational opportunities to look into. And we can also connect um, with some of our other team members to see if there's you know, what might be something specific for pre-hospital care settings. I'm not seeing any additional questions. Um, I just would like to remind everybody that we do have a handout attached to this this webinar and just uh, wonderful resources to recommend that you uh, uh, download a copy. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity if there's another question. Well, I guess we have had all the questions, Lynn. Thanks, Rhoda. That's wonderful. Thank well, you thank so much. I want to thank everybody for your engagement today. And just as a reminder, you know, the, as I said a minute ago, this, this webinar has a handout. Um, we want to encourage you to join us tomorrow for tomorrow's Lunch and Learn, Quality Improvement Reflections and Recognition. Uh, we will have a reflection on the journeys to improve heart failure care by, by Dr. Clyde Yancey and uh, also running reports for progress to awards. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today and have a wonderful day. Thank you all. It was a great presentation.